It's hard to call an SUV that starts at 1.64 crore rupees a steal, but that's what this Range Rover Sport comes across as. C1 in light of the Range Rover that starts at 2.38 crore rupees, and you'll get what I'm saying. Let's start with the way it looks. Measuring just under 5 meters long, 2 meters wide and 1.8 meters to the roof, the Range Rover Sport is a lot of SUV. In fact, it's not much smaller than the standard length Range Rover and the two models are actually identical in wheelbase too. But as is evident, there's much more to the Sport than mere size. The raked A and D pillars help identify it as a Sport and the styling just grabs you. And that's without a reliance on oversized grills or shouty elements. Rather, it's all about minimalist details and subtle cues that just work together brilliantly. The lines are crisp, surfacing is clean and what can be hidden is hidden. For instance, the door handles that sit flush with the body only pop out on unlocking and if you pay close attention, you'll notice there's no step in the glass house and pillars either. The slim tail lamps are in keeping with this new theme, but they don't quite have the wow factor of the latest Range Rover's discrete vertical units. Still, as an SUV to make a grand entry in, the Sport has you covered. Under the skin, the new Range Rover Sport is more closely related to the top tier Range Rover than ever before. It's built on Land Rover's new MLA Flex platform and brings with it all the advancements in technology, comfort, stiffness, refinement that we've already experienced on the Range Rover. Much is shared between the Range Rover and Range Rover Sport on the inside as well. This elegant dashboard is common to the two cars, though the center console is slightly higher up here and you're sat 20 millimeters lower. And all that is in the interest of giving the sport's interior a sportier vibe. And don't dismiss this as a Range Rover light because cabin quality is up there with the top tier Range Rover. Well, almost because you do get a lot of leather, there's a generous use of soft touch materials on the inside and there's loads of customization options as well. So you can have this interior finished in vegan materials if you so desire. And yeah, while you are sat lower, that's relative to a Range Rover. In absolute terms, you sit high and the commanding position makes you feel like the king of the road. The throne-like front seats also get my vote. They are adjustable in multiple ways. There's heating, there's ventilation and even massage functions. Features-wise, you get a sweet sounding Meridian sound system. There's a 13.7 inch digital display. It's crisp and very informative, but still not quite as configurable as the units on the latest of Mercs. The 13.1 inch touchscreen also does its job really well. Very slick, looks like an iPad, almost works to the same level. And it packs in wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But the highlight to me has got to be the multiple cameras that give you a brilliant 360 degree view. In low speed settings, you can even opt to have a relay of a feed from under the car. Feature loaded as the touchscreen is, it's thankfully not the go-to control for everything. And don't you just love the inclusion of physical knobs for the climate control system? No fumbling around with the touchscreen for the most basic of settings. A cool bit here is that you can push the knob and that'll get you to the settings for the seats, ventilation and heating functions. Pull it and it takes you to blower controls. The Range Rover Sport is available in India in four trims and there's lots of scope of personalization too. So you could go for a lower spec version and just add in the options of interest. Our test car is an HSE that adds in quite a few features over all that's standard. But let's get back to contrasting the Sport with the Range Rover. And that means I literally need to get back. This is the seat a lot of the Range Rover Sports India clientele will spend their time on and the news is good. 
For one, space is generous even by large luxury SUV standards. You have to remember that the Range Rover Sport shares its wheelbase with the standard length Range Rover and that should explain why I have so much room around me. There are quite a few goodies packed in as well. You get a backrest adjust though it's more hospital bed than sophisticated SUV in its operation. It reclines by up to 37 degrees. Then you have the option of ventilation and heating for the rear seats. But what is a bit of a miss are manual sun blinds at the back. An important point of note on ride comfort too. Ride comfort has always been a highlight on Range Rovers, so it's a bit disappointing to tell you that the low speed ride on the new Range Rover Sport on these 22 inch optional rims is a bit busy. You do feel more of the road than you'd like and frankly if I were specking my Sport, I'd settle for smaller 21 inch rims. What you'd lose in looks, you'd definitely gain in comfort. Also, for that ultimate rear seat experience, you will have to consider spending big on the Range Rover. This one doesn't get the option of individual chairs at the back and no long wheelbase either. Long story short, if a Range Rover scores 11 on 10 for rear seat comfort, the Range Rover Sport gets an 8. Then again, the argument is that the Sport is intended for the owner driver. So it's back to the steering for me. The Sport is offered in India with two engine options. There's the D350 diesel, that's a 3.0-litre straight-six diesel engine that makes 350 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque, and I expect that to be the mainstay of the range. What I have with me today is the P400 that gets a 3.0-litre straight-six petrol engine that makes 400 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque. This engine also gets mild hybrid tech, but don't get too excited about economy. You'll manage high single digit figures on the best of days. Now, if that is not a concern for you, this engine surely deserves a fair hearing because it's one very characterful unit. It's smooth and refined as you'd expect a large petrol engine to be, but press down a bit harder and it'll introduce you to its more entertaining side. It's not a forceful engine per se, but it's got this long and sustained build of power and given the space, it'll happily rev past 6,000 RPM. And truth is, you will be tempted to really extend it because of the way it sounds. It's got this very satisfying snarl that's partly piped in through the speakers. We haven't verified the 5.9 second claim 0 to 100 kph time, but there's no denying the Range Rover Sport is a brisk SUV. But it's when you're really going for it that you'll realize that the engine and gearbox aren't quite on the same wavelength. The gearbox tends to feel a bit hesitant when you really rush it, but nothing a move to sport mode or just a pull of the paddle shifters can't resolve immediately. Going fast in a straight line is one thing. Does the new Sport have the handling chops to do justice to the Sport in its name? Well, the short answer is no. Now, the new Sport is more engaging than the last gen model thanks to a more feelsome steering and uh, generally better composure. But it's tall, it's heavy and always feels its size in the corners. It doesn't quite shrink around you in the way a Porsche Cayenne can. You can spec active anti-roll bars and four-wheel steering to sharpen the handling, but as is, the Sport feels its best when not pushed to the extremes. There's another often overlooked facet of the Sport. For an SUV that'll likely have a minder to ensure that it's gleaming at all times, it's easy to forget that the Sport has a rugged side too. There's four-wheel drive, it's got Land Rover's Terrain Response 2 system that preps the car for different off-road scenarios and at max off-road height, 
The air suspension unlocks up to 281 millimeters of ground clearance. For the really adventurous, there's also 900 millimeters of water wading ability. Now, owners will typically not make any use of the sport's off-road abilities, but as a vehicle to survey your upcoming township's construction, it doesn't get much better than this. While the sport is brought back to showroom condition, here's what I made of it. First and foremost, it's a charmer. It feels distinct and special even within the small universe of large luxury SUVs. It's a model that'll lure you to spend big given how much more expensive it is than traditional rivals. But as mentioned at the very start, the right way to see the sport is from the perspective of the even more expensive Range Rover. Do so and you'll find that the sport does most things as well as the top of the pyramid Range Rover for relatively sensible money. Relative being the operative word. It's still not quite the ultimate sport as its name would have you believe, but as a Range Rover, the sport is splendid.